The first human cases of COVID-19 were reported by officials in Wuhan in December 2019. 19 months later, the virus has colonized vast territories of the planet, with over 190 million human cases and counting. New global alliances, a kind of reverse globalization, and the crumbling of established economic cycles are just some of the pandemic's disruptive effects. At the centre of this planetary scale glitch, not the human, but the microbe. We recognise the contagious respiratory disease only through the symptoms it left behind. First in our bodies, and later through the statistics, maps and histograms that dominate our news feeds. From the start, collective practices of social distancing, hyper-sterilisation and universal lockdown were just some of the violent and not always effective techniques of eradication and control, spawned by our low resolution understanding of the microbial level of pandemic activity. Over time, the pandemic has taught us that in order to act big, we must think small. Our microbial environments critically inform and are informed by how we construct our social, cultural and technological realities. If at first the reaction to the outbreak was blatant and reactive, viral presence or absence was replaced by a concern for the load, density and duration of contact. New signals are offering a more granular vision of what a proper transcalar pandemic response might be. For example, the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention in the US initiated the National Wastewater Surveillance System in response to the pandemic. Monitoring wastewater through metagenomic sequencing revealed the presence of the virus, informing more precise plans of counteraction to contain large-scale community infections. Sanitation tracking, viral variant sequencing, simulation modelling and evolving sanitation protocols through a better understanding of contagion all act as very early signs of sequencing as a potential tool for a more accurate response. Advances in sequencing and the following shift in our culture of design may be the breakthrough that enables a new kind of nuanced, adaptive and proactive approach to deliberate microbial management, triggering a terraforming effect. The drive for complete microbial eradication is not new. Microbes have a kind of hyperactivity of movement and mutation that enables wide dispersal and rapid adaptation. They never operate in isolation. Mountains, glaciers and currents have always served as natural channels and borders of microbial movement. But with the first human mass migration and the advent of trade came the dismantling of natural boundaries and the cultivation of synthesized corridors. Routes like the Silk Road accelerated the spread of culture, ideas, goods, and also contagion, with the human as the main vector for all of the above. Trade networks were, in effect, microbial networks. It wasn't long before these planetary webs of transmission were observed by the naked eye. The Republic of Venice first broadly implemented the spatial politics of quarantine in the 15th century as a response to the linking of the Black Death to the arrivals and departures at the port, the nodal hub in Central Europe. Our recognition of microbiomes exists only by proxy, with tools and technologies constructing our perception. At first, all we could observe were symptoms. Over time, more precise tools have improved resolution, allowing us to zoom in and understand microbial interactions and the traces they leave behind. A fundamental change in making sense of the invisible was the invention of the microscope in the 17th century. With enhanced sight, the microscope introduced an empirical kind of truth to disease transmission that triggered the shift from miasma to germ theory, framing previously unknown microorganisms for the pathogenic spread of most diseases. If at first innovation was about microbial understanding, fast followed the wave of microbial control through eradication. The 20th century marked the start of a culture of cleanliness in which we designed determinedly and explicitly against microbes. At its peak, the late 19th century hygienist movement pushed the design of extreme sterilised environments, 
highly tempered and sealed volumes that attempted to secure the human from its non-human adversaries. But even if these extreme design proposals didn't enter the mainstream architectural vernacular, the hygienist movement effectively pushed the cultural needle towards containment at any cost. Sterilisation evolved as a fact of life in all corners of our everyday lives. City planning, modernist architecture, FDA food standards, the production of chemicals and cleaning products, and different scales of ceiling are the heritage of a kind of microbial paranoia. The hygienist movement framed all microbes as pathogens, something to be eradicated at all costs. This kicked off the culture of cleanliness movement, where hyper-eradication and containment were forefronted in the design process. In the middle of the 20th century, the X-ray diffraction image of crystallised DNA and the blue marble image reframed the position of the human, complicating, if not entirely decentering our role, from micro to macro. The turn of the 21st century witnessed the sequencing of the human genome. The project took almost 13 years and $2.7 billion. Now being utilised exponentially, the time and cost have shortened to less than a day and a thousand dollars, shattering the proposed arc of Moore's law. Both photography and DNA sequencing altered the way we perceive and act back on environments. From aerial photographs to terrestrial modelling media, the arc of imaging has evolved from a tool of observation to an agent of design. In comparison to imaging, we are at an early stage in the longer arc of sequencing. We are at the cusp of a shift in design culture, informed by a recalibration of understanding and decision making. Sequencing, sensing and modelling have revealed that the most dominant relationships we share with the microbiome are non-pathogenic, which demands a new kind of framing of our entanglements. Genomic technologies are already being employed as a tool of observation and mapping, informing how we synthesize our immediate landscapes. One of the examples is the MetaSub Consortium, which is actively working on the cyclic monitoring of microbial signatures and transportation systems. They gather information by sampling the most transient and dense interaction spaces for a more informed meta-design of the urban biomes. Such endeavours of preemptive microbial mapping and monitoring, which are still at an experimental stage, are signs of an inevitable move beyond eradication. Simply put, sequencing allows a higher resolution approach to design, manifesting deliberate microbial synthesis. Potential trajectories of intervention plots could go in three directions, containment, conservation and composition of the microbiome. The potential threat of disease has triggered the production of highly tempered environments, which target explicitly the containment of all possible pathogens. The capacity to gain a more granular understanding of what we can contain and how allows us to design accordingly. From the Lunar Receiving Lab of the 60s to the potential return of the Mars rover in 2030, NASA has quarantined astronauts and tested samples to mitigate the threat of interplanetary infection. On a more local scale, plant disease centres such as Earth Heart Lab are researching plant contagions which, in the case of escaping, will have a disastrous effect on the world's food supply. Specifications of spatial and atmospheric design run as detailed as the unilateral movement of airflow, individuals and materials. Such examples of design for containment highlight our preparedness towards the pathogenic microbe. Moving beyond containment, our evolving understanding of the microbiome informs us how critical microbial diversities are. The altering of landscapes has had a significant impact on ecosystems, reducing the multiplicity of plant and animal life at the base of organic webs. As sequencing environmental DNA becomes more widely adopted in conservation biology, it can aid efforts to stop mass extinctions and population declines. Decentralising sequencing technologies like the Oxford Nanopore 
allows for mapping diverse and remote environments. Evolving genome scale data is used to identify hotspots to prioritise for preservation, gain a better understanding of the genetic makeup of entire microbial communities, and enrich ecosystem modelling. Sequencing technologies are a key tool to inform policies that attempt to mitigate threats to endangered species. Microbial life is the lowest denominator in both the production and decomposition cycles between the organic and inorganic rounds of energy and material flows. With increased resolution, we can move to the stage of composing our immediate microbial environments in a more deliberate way. Food and soil are domains where sequencing has been most intensely coupled with remote sensing to modify existing production systems. Microbial inoculation is used to increase drought resistance. Soil has been sequenced to measure nutrient and microbial composition and remotely monitored in real time. Whilst agriculture exceeds its limitations, it remains a major cause of climate breakdown, which replaced complex wild ecosystems with simplified human food chains. Whilst debates over plant versus meat-based diets dominate the discourse, technologies of genomics and synthetic biology will soon make them irrelevant. Before long, most of our food will come neither from animals nor plants, but from unicellular life. This means multiplying particular microorganisms to produce precise products. On the frontier of this shift right now are companies like Solar Food, Air Protein and Deep Branch. Brewing microbes through precision fermentation makes it possible to produce nutrition, replacing all farming except fruit and veg production. Precision fermentation will reclaim vast areas of land and sea, massively reducing the use of pesticides and fertilizer. For the last 30 years, attempts have been made to engineer and design by altering and enriching microbiomes as agents for bioremediation of chemical pollution. New tools of molecular engineering and metagenomics help explore solutions to fight toxicity in the most unenvironmental of environments. In the BK Bioreactor Goannis Canal project in Brooklyn, sequencing is used to map the toxic repercussions of 150 years of industrial pollution. Combined sewage overflow showed new microbial communities unique to the urban realm. If we consider the wider applications of bioremediation with the global environmental microbiome at its core, the potential decentralization and massive global metagenomic scale-up, we can push further the synthetic and better calibrated development of integrative metabolic models. This will, in turn, accelerate the timeline of degrading processes to match microbial and human processes. The closer we zoom in, the clearer the interconnections between the micro and the macro. From this focused perspective, strict differentiation of scales of design and their effects proves insufficient. Facing human-engineered ecological disasters will require a more curated and informed response. This challenge demands major environmental interventions through the reframed and granular actions of design and decision making. Sites of containment, conservation and composition highlight a trajectory that reframes our interaction with the microbiome, plotting a transition from blunt, reactive eradication to dynamic, proactive calibration at planetary scale. Here, at the tipping point of the sequencing revolution, hyper-sterilization purity and the contemporary drive for cleanliness make way for an editorial approach to composing microbial diversity. Microbioengineering discloses a new era for design, connecting different scales of intervention and effect. Plot is a story of the revelation and a sight of design. Through this plot of sequencing, an awareness of new opportunities for tailored approaches emerges developing our capacities to monitor and act upon the world in the pursuit of a viable planetarity. 
Calibrating microbial composition can alter several domains at various scales, impacting world economies, food security and healthcare. If implemented at scale, sequencing can become a new tool for an increasingly precise mode of design that may lead to deliberate microbial terraforming.